welcome to my channel, Assets and Gases. Uh, today, I'm going to go through my fume scrubber system, including the input manifold, the flash train, the pump, maintenance and solutions, and how it works. So the flash train starts here at the exit from the input manifold. Uh, the fumes are drawn out and they come down into these flasks. Each flask is packed with bio balls from aquariums and then solutions that the fumes then run through to scrub them. Each flask uh, has tubing connectors, both at the top here, which is fairly normal. We've all seen that, but also a tube connector at the bottom. So we have the top one, then we have the bottom one for our intake, top for our output. This allows the fumes to essentially come out of the manifold. They come down in through the bottom, percolate through the solution, back out and down again, top to bottom to the next flask, percolate through the solution. Do that one more time in through our third flask over to our safety flask. Our safety flask is designed to protect the pump. It brings in any air, but more importantly, condensation. It ends up deposited in this flask so that the none of that condensation that is making it into the vacuum pump. The one advantage for the clear glass is that we can see the fumes being scrubbed and we can see which fumes are passing from beaker to beaker. Generally speaking, in beaker one, we're going to see a few fumes come through. Beaker two generally takes care of those, and we don't really see any red at the top of beaker two. Um, beaker three, of course, is the last stop. If we start to see red coming to the top or even the little bits of beaker three, it's time to look at our caustic levels, test our pHs, and assess our maintenance needs. What I like about these beakers and having the in and out on the beaker walls themselves is it allows maintenance to be done just by removing the stopper. This allows you to take the stopper out. You can add more caustic or peroxide solution if needed, um, siphon out fluids, replace fluids. When you're done, it's just a matter of finishing up, putting the stopper in, and it's ready to go. If I didn't clarify earlier, these are five liter beakers. Um, takes about a gallon of solution each. Um, they look, the one on the end looks a little smaller, a um, little quality control. I think in the manufacturing, the mouth of it is smaller. The beaker itself is a five liter beaker, just takes a little bit smaller uh, stopper to close it up. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about the bio balls that are packed in these. I discussed before, these are aquarium items. Here's an example of them here, a bucket of half of them. It's just PVC balls are mostly air to allow a lot of solution in, but it gives a lot of surface area for that solution and the fumes to react on to effectively scrub. Second component of my scrubber is the vacuum. I use a vacuum pump versus a water pump. It's just a basic three and a half cubic foot per minute oil-based vacuum pump. The maintenance it really needs is just monitoring the oil as it discolors and gets a little more amber than you see here. Dump it out, put new oil, new oil in, and it chugs been chugging along with proper maintenance without any real problems. Um, get everything hooked up. Um, plug it in here, turn it on. See it bubbling the air coming from the intake manifold through the flash train. If we move to the hood here, we can hear the bubbling from the flask through the intake manifold. All right, the final component of the scrubber is, of course, the intake manifold. This is where we are pulling the fumes in for the reaction vessel into the flash train. Um, as you can see, it is made of PVC. Um, we have a couple of intakes here. So if I bring in a reaction vessel, let me use this picture as an example. Essentially, it goes onto the hot plate or whatever. We put a bunch cover on it and make sure the spout is aligned with the uh, intake tube. The manifold itself made a three quarter inch PVC. A couple of T's that provide our intakes, a the, the valve that separates them. Um, so this one, if we're doing two vessels, we'll have that valve open. Doing one vessel, I'll always use this one and close that T just to improve the suction. The 
tubes themselves are made of steel reinforced PVC, flexible PVC. Um, I buy it in two foot sections, cut them to length to fit my various size beakers. They slide really easily onto the teeth. The last component of our scrubber is the master valve coming into it. I have this on the outside of the hood so I can turn it off without necessarily having to open the hood. So for our daily maintenance, it's really a matter of checking our fluids to ensure the pH is correct, what we want, and then doing any replacement of fluids to bring the pH into line and ensure we have enough of a buffer to capture the next oxide gases as they're produced. This first beaker contains a, a dilute hydrogen peroxide solution. And this makes, it makes nitric acid, and you can see we are relatively acidic. That's not surprising but it does scrub a fair amount of the gases out and gives us an opportunity if we want to distill it to recapture some of that nitric acid for further use. Generally, when I see it this acidic, I'll go ahead and replace the solution, which we'll do in the weekly maintenance um, that I'm gonna demonstrate here in the very next section of this video. The next two beakers contain caustic sodium hydroxide solution. This will neutralize and absorb any NOx that escapes through the peroxide solution. As you can see, testing this, it is very basic. Um, this solution does need replaced. Normally when I test this, I'm looking to see if the pH is starting to go up. If it is on a daily basis, I'll add more caustic to bring the pH down and create more buffer. But over time, and generally about once a week, I'll completely change out the solution. I've added pH or caustic into this solution previously in both of these, um, but it is time to go ahead and change them out, which we will demonstrate shortly. Of these last two flasks, the middle one does the bulk of the work, with the third one being really the follow-on in case that we lose our ability to neutralize in that middle one. It will almost always stay basic because if we're testing daily, uh, we don't really get a chance for it to get super affected by the nitrogen oxide before we make adjustments. But taking a quick look at it here, not surprisingly, uh, we'll pause over. We'll see, as expected, it's basic. I generally go ahead and ship, or switch out the fluids. Um, at the same time for both of these, I just find the consistency, make sure that I don't miss something and we don't end up with an issue where we're feeding oxide out into the atmosphere or into the pump. So outside of just regular maintenance, I also keep an eye on these. Um, this first beaker, it was, if it becomes overly acidic, it will just let the NOx fumes basically bubble right through the other one. And so what I do here is I start to see, if I start to see nitrate, Oxide fumes coming up to the top of both of these beakers. I'll generally shut things down, take a look at it, adjust the uh, solution, but switch out the peroxide solution so that it can continue to absorb the bulk of it before we get into our neutralization steps. The second and third beakers, on the other hand, when I check them on a daily basis, if the pH is starting to get up, get close to neutral, starting to raise, um, I'll generally just add caustic into them um, and then switch them out on their regular schedule. Um, adding more caustic gives more neutralization power. Um, sometimes I may take a little fluid out and add more fluid in to give enough buffer room to hold a fair amount. But generally speaking, they don't need replaced except for on that weekly basis. So to recap our daily maintenance, first we'll check the oil in the pump, which I showed just a little bit earlier. Then I'll check the pH in the first flask. If it gets particularly acidic, we'll go ahead and switch out the solution to create a buffer. In the second and third flask, we'll also take the pH, make sure it's very basic. If we see that pH starting to lower at all, we'll go ahead and add more caustic to bring the pH down. Maybe add a little fluid, exchange a little bit of fluid to create some more buffer. Um, but those generally don't need switched out, um, except for on the weekly basis. Then the last maintenance that I'll demonstrate today is weekly maintenance. So for weekly maintenance, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to change our fluids out. I have my maintenance kit, a siphon, some buckets. So before I start, you know, these are different solutions. And our first flask is primarily acid. Our other two flasks, on the other hand, are going to be basic solutions. Normally, you could store the acid, distill it down, and reuse that nitric acid. Um, the basic solutions are a combination of sodium hydroxide. At this point, 
which is going to give you some um, nitrogen, sodium nitrates. So for these the two basic flasks, generally I have to reduce them and just properly dispose of the solutions in there, refill them with fresh solution. So here we go. Start our siphoning into the buckets. So our siphoning is complete and we're ready to put our solution back in. Um, in this first one, we're going to put hydrogen peroxide again. I'm just using store-bought 3% hydrogen peroxide. I'll put the entire bottle in there and then top off stilled water. In the other two, we're going to put lye, sodium hydroxide. Uh, we're going to divide effectively the entire canister of granules between the two. But we'll start with our hydrogen peroxide first. We'll put the uh, full bottle in here. Then we'll top this off to about the five liter mark with distilled water. Cap that off. Then we're gonna move on to mixing our sodium hydroxide solution to pour into the other two. So we'll put about half of the container granules few cups of distilled water, stir this. It's gonna heat up pretty good. You can see it's steaming. Give that a stir to get it dissolved. And into the first beaker. We'll go ahead and mix up the rest and put it into our second beaker. Top both of these off with distilled water again to about the five liter mark. I'm gonna rinse out my pitcher that mixed the sodium dioxide with the first pour. All right, so we're completely topped off, ready to go. So I've got the tubes all hooked back up. We'll turn on our pump. See it bubbling through nice. You're probably gonna notice I did something a little bit different with the packing in here. Um, I'm trying to do a little bit of an experiment to see if I can improve the efficiency of my scrubber. At this point, that will end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, share. As always, comments are always welcome.